All right, new finger tapping. I'll talk a little bit about the theory, uh, basically what I said in the, in the email, but uh, let's get into the new tapping. So here we're going to tap, pull off, pull off. So no hammer on, all pull offs. And back to triplets. So 60 beats per minute. I actually, before we start, one, one thing that makes this this kind of tapping pattern a little tricky, or it can, is when you repeat the pattern. So you got your initial tap, pull off, pull off. When you go for the next tap, you got to make sure that the tap note is hitting before this note over here with the pinky, or if you were using the ring or the middle finger. Basically, a problem that could happen to be aware of is you might end up doing this on accident. So like that pinky might go down a little early before the tap. So you got to make sure that that isn't happening. Now you can put the tap finger and the pinky down at the exact same time. That works fine because the tapped finger or the, the tap note that's what's going to ring out not this back here but if you're late with that tap then you're going to hear the pinky hit first so you can aim to have both go down at the same time or aim to have the tap finger go down first and the pinky just barely getting in behind that but just make sure you're not hearing the pinky come down early that's the big thing to watch out for all right, 61 and a 2 and a 3 and a 4 and a. Twenty. One, two, three, four. Uh, take two. One and a two and a three and a four and a. scale thing ready so just four strings at a time all right um, so before I send over any new chord stuff you know where you're figuring things out like like on the guitar or making new chords and all that stuff let's get the uh, corrections done for what you turned in and we switch things over Display, capture, right. There we go. All right, so let's see. So um, as I mentioned um, in the email, like the thing to remember is using all seven note names in the major scale 
and I use like A as an example, or I do only one kind of A, one kind of B, one kind of C, and so on. So looking at what you did correct, so C, D, and G, absolutely. So you had your, your C note to start, that's the one, and then D would be number two, and then going through the rest, E is three, F is four, G is five. So the one, two, and the five, C, D, and G, that's correct. Uh, for the E, oh wow, did I mark that one? Hold on a second, hold on a second. I did, I did, I did, okay. Just make sure I mark that right. Now, I'll explain this one and hopefully that gives you enough to go on for the rest of the corrections that need to be made. So E, so let's, let's look at the notes like this. An E major scale, so B, C, D, E, we can start it here, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Root note again. So when you name these, remember, when it comes to your seven note major scale stuff, all seven note names must be accounted for. For example, when you're doing the C major scale, you got your C, D, E, F, G, A, B. One kind of C, one kind of D, one kind of E, one kind of D, or F, etc. So like when you're playing the G major scale, you'd have your G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. Not G flat and then G. So we're not going G, A, B, C, D, E, G flat, G. That's two kinds of Gs, a G flat and a G natural. That also leaves out any kind of Fs. So zero Fs, two types of Gs. That's not right. We need to have one, basically we get the seven notes. A note name needs to be associated with each note being used. So that's why it's F sharp, not G flat. One kind of F, in this case F sharp for the key of G. Now, looking at the E sus two, you gotta think, well, what are the notes for an E major scale? So we have E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, back to E. So again, the notes that make an E major scale, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp. There is no G flat in the key of E. So G flat, you can, you can, you can the, the, the G natural is say E, F, G, right? So there's your G natural, that fret. And if you flat it, you wind up on the seventh fret, which is E, F, F sharp. 7th fret. Yes, F sharp and G flat share the same space. They are technically the same note because they sound the same. N harmonic, E N harmonic. That, N harmonic. That is, that, that word means you have two note names for the same tone, the same, basically the same sound. So an F sharp and a G flat, that's an enharmonic, it's the same sound. So using the correct note name for these sorts of things, that's basically what we're working on here, making sure we spell it out correctly. So in an E major scale, E is in the one position, some kind of F is in the two position, some kind of G is in the third position, some kind of A in the fourth, some kind of B in the fifth, some kind of C in the sixth, and so on. So hopefully that makes sense. It needs to be F sharp, not G flat, because F sharp, just right on up there, E, F sharp. F sharp is the second one. So that's what it needs to be for it to be correct and keep everything in nice, neat order. So that's the big thing to think of when correcting all this. Um, Hopefully that makes sense. Any questions, let me know. Whenever you get it filled out and corrected, send it back over. And as long as you send it over before late Thursday night, I will get something else over to you. 
so you can start working on making some suspended cords. All right, talk to you soon.